Hello, this is Terry Bradshaw, Research Specialist at the University of Vermont. This is the second part of a presentation from the 2011 New England Vegetable and Fruit Meetings in Manchester, New Hampshire. In this part of the presentation, I will discuss disease incidence on fruit and foliage in two research orchards, including a newly planted high-density orchard and a top-grafted orchard. Each orchard contains the five apple cultivars, Ginger Gold, Honeycrisp, Liberty, Macallan, and Zestar and was established either by planting new nursery trees or by top grafting an 18-year-old existing orchard in 2006. Data for this presentation is from 2009 through 2011. During the course of this talk, Orchard 1 will refer to the newly planted orchard and Orchard 2 will refer to the top grafted orchard. Apple scab is potentially the most serious disease of apples in the northeastern U.S and its effective management has been considered an impediment to, op to adoption of organic practices by growers in the region. In both orchards, ginger gold has had the highest level of foliar apple scab in most years, followed by Macowan and Zestar. Liberty is a scab resistant cultivar and has not shown any scab in the, any foliar scab over the course of the seasons. Honeycrisp appears to be nearly as resistant as Liberty and has always uh, fit in the same uh, statistical rank separation class. Note the high incidence of scab on the susceptible cultivars, Ginger Gold, Macallan, and Zestar, particularly in 2009. This level of foliar scab may be a problem as it could indicate potential for high fruit scab which is of primary economic consideration to apple growers. The scab spores will spread from the foliage in, in, the, in the tree canopy and onto the fruit as it develops. For fruit scab, this is for fruit that were assessed at harvest, we see similar rankings where ginger gold, Macallan, and Zestar were more susceptible to apple scab than Honeycrisp or Liberty. However, we only saw statistical separation in 2009, and for most cultivars in most years in most orchards, the level has been below the 1% threshold that's generally accepted for wholesale apple growers, and it's been within a range, an acceptable range, for a direct farm market apple grower. But we still see, particularly in Orchard 2 in 2009, an increase in fruit scab to some fairly high levels, including 13.5% of fruit with scab on ginger gold and nearly 4% on Macallan. What caused the increase of fruit scab in 2009? After the primary scab season in every year, in every orchards, we go through and assess the amount of scab that may be in the orchard to decide whether or not we can uh, halt disease control measures. In 2009, 3,000 leaves were assessed in Orchard 1 and about 2,200 leaves assessed in Orchard 2. Of all those leaves, two lesions, two apple scab lesions were found in Orchard 1 and zero lesions were found in Orchard 2. The assessment was completed in Orchard 2 by using ladders climbing up into the tops of the trees. However, it appears we didn't get all the way to the tops of the trees and there likely were a few lesions in there. We also saw record uh, summer rainfall start the week following this assessment and continue through most of the summer. The biggest problem, however, has to do with the equipment used to spray these orchards. The sprayer shown in the tractor on the left is a three-point hitch air blast sprayer with a 28-inch fan. This fan, the sprayer, was capable of covering the entire canopy in Orchard 1 with the shorter trees. However, in Orchard 2, which you can see on the right, you can see Morgan, who's about five and a half feet tall, uh, trimming around the trees, and the trees extend a good seven or eight feet above her. And Zooming into higher resolution pictures, you can see that that sprayer simply was not covering the very tops of the trees. So the lesson learned here is that we need to match the equipment, whether you're an IPM grower 
or an, orga or an organic grower, your equipment must fully cover the canopies of the trees. Otherwise, you're, you will have disease problems and potentially uh, uh, insect problems down the road. Rust has emerged as a concern in both orchards. The rusts that we assess include cedar apple rust, hawthorn rust, Japanese rust, and quince rust. And we put all these together in the category of rusts. Foliar rust incidence has generally been rather high on all cultivars. The general ranking, uh, which has been relatively consistent across the years, has been that ginger gold shows greater incidence of rust greater than or roughly equal to honey crisp. So ginger gold and honey crisp have slightly higher susceptibility to rust than Liberty, which then is followed by McCowan and Zestar. The relative incidence of foliar rust tracks fairly well with the amount of moisture that was seen in each growing season. Fruit rust was noted during harvest samples in all years. Ginger gold again ranks the highest, and other cultivars have been variable across the years, with McCowan consistently ranking in the lowest in terms of the incidence of rust on fruit. What is most troubling to us is the increase in rust over the three years of this study to the level seen in 2011, where we're seeing upwards of 40% of fruit on some cultivars uh, with rust on the surface of the fruit. Fruit rots were thought to be a potential problem at the beginning of the experiment. Incidence of necrotic leaf spot was collected during foliar assessments every summer. Each season we saw that McCowan generally had the highest rank followed soon by Zestar. There was lower incidence of necrotic leaf spot on ginger gold, honeycrisp, and liberty. Necrotic leaf spots are often caused by Botrysferia obtusa, a fungus that can also cause the condition known as black rot on apple fruit. In 2010, we did see an effect from the kelp extract treatments on the incidence of necrotic leaf spot. And the effect on the incidence of necrotic leaf spot from the kelp extracts was not cultivar specific and was also not consistent that both extracts reduced or increased the incidence of necrotic leaf spot. We did see that C crop 16 had an increased incidence of necrotic leaf spot on foliage over Stimplex. However, neither was statistically different from the non-treated control. The incidence of rots on harvested fruits was assessed each year. Fruit rots include all biotic decays, including white rot, bitter rot, black rot, and other general rots. We attempted to count only the rots that were not associated with skin punctures, either from physical means or from insect feeding. Rots were variable between year and across cultivars. In 2009, in Orchard 1, Honeycrisp and Zestar had the highest incidence of rots. Ginger Gold was next, but not different from the other four. And McCowan and Liberty had the lowest incidence of rots. In Orchard 2, we saw similar rankings, with Honeycrisp and Zestar having the greatest incidence of rots, followed by Liberty, then Ginger Gold and McCowan. However, it was not statistically significant. In 2010, Honeycrisp had the highest incidence of rots in both orchards, followed by Liberty, but that was not always st statistically significant. In 2011, Zestar had the highest incidence of rots in Orchard 1. The rest were much lower. And in Orchard 2, Ginger Gold, Liberty, and Honeycrisp had a greater incidence of rots than McCowan and Zestar, which were not different from any and were norm numerically intermediate. The rots were higher in Orchard 2 in 2010 and 2011 for all cultivars. Remember, we have denser canopies in this orchard, which, which indicates we probably have higher moisture uh, and humidity content in the tree canopy. And we also have more dead wood and decaying trunks from the grafting operation uh, that happened in that orchard. 
In 2009, there was an effect of the kelp extracts on the incidence of fruit rots. The kelp effect was only seen in 2009 where both extracts had numerically greater rot incidence, but only C crop 16 was statistically greater than the non-treated control, and the effect was only seen on the Honeycrisp cultivar. Future research that, that we would like to conduct uh, on disease uh, susceptibility of these cultivars includes looking at reduced sulfur and lime sulfur treatments to still manage apple scab, which we've been doing fairly well in terms of commercial threshold of scab incidence on the fruit at harvest, and still be able to reduce the non-target effects of sulfur and lime sulfur application on the trees. This may include trialing some low-dose summer copper treatments or other treatments to replace sulfurs to find a material that better works against rust and fruit rots. We also may include some sanitation trials, uh, which have been indicated uh, may have some effect on fruit rots in particular. This concludes the second part of this presentation. Please continue to part three, where I will discuss arthropod damage incidents in the two research orchards.